It's kind of completely impromptu. I've actually not rehearsed this at all. I'm just going to show you how to make uh, bubblers. Every once in a while, some lye mist or something may get into the browns gas. If you're going to breathe the browns gas, you need the browns gas to be super clean. So if you bubble the browns gas through the water, it will get really clean because the water uh, absorbs the lye and then the gas goes out clean. So my choice of a bottle is to choose something with a nice wide bottom. Just go to the grocery store, buy juice or something that you would already be using. So the bottle is essentially free, comes with it. And then you're going to have, you'll get from the hardware store some quarter inch ID, that's inside diameter tubing, uh, three eighths inch outside diameter. And then you'll have the uh, um, uh, bubblers, or it's, uh, just bubblers that you can get from um, a pet supply store. I got these online eBay for about two bucks a piece kind of thing. And again, in eBay, you can get these check valves um, that are made for uh, various gases and what have you. Uh, you'll see them under HHO. A lot of HHO uh, people use these particular type of check valves. And in the same hardware store you bought the, that tubing, you can buy, this is a vinyl, a soft vinyl tubing. And this is a harder uh, polypropylene tubing or, or what have you. And what it is is eighth inch inside diameter, quarter inch outside diameter, but it's very stiff. And we'll show you what to use that for in just a minute. So, <clears throat> just to make a simple bubbler so that you can scrub your gas, or in some cases you could even use this as a bubbler to prevent backfires um, with the if you're using it as a torch, because Believe it or not, with uh, low pressure, these bottles will withstand a Brown's gas backfire. If you have higher pressure, it, it won't. But in our in our case here, we're just trying to do it for Brown's gas for health. So mainly, we're just looking at making the um, uh, scrubbing the gas. So <clears throat> you want to be far enough in toward the center that you don't hit the uh, bottle itself, but you want to be far enough out that you don't have the two holes too close together because you want and so right about there, we're looking pretty good. Now the hole itself I make slightly smaller than, like one size smaller than the uh, tubing. So the tubing is a uh, three eighths of an inch. So I, I think it, I went with the sixteenth uh, of an inch less. I'll look up the actual measurement for you in just a second. So the actual measurement is 11.30 seconds. We're making two bubblers today because if you're using Brown's Gas for Health, it's my recommendation that you actually bubble it through two bubblers because one bubble bubbler will scrub pretty good. The second bubbler just kind of guarantees it. And at the same time, it isn't just the lye that's in the Brown's Gas. The new Brown's gas, the new newly formed hydrogen and oxygen, the oxygen itself is very oxidizing and can feel very rough to your um, breathing. So what you want to do is um, soften that and it does a pretty good job if you run it through two bubblers. Running the Brown's gas through water softens the feel of the, of the new oxygen. So we'll just clean off all the plastic residue inside and out. We'll wash these bottles before we actually put any gas in them. Now what we'll do is cut a couple of... Well, first thing I'll show you is the... Ah, put my knife away already show you how to use this hose here to adapt this little eighth inch um, fitting. Just put that on there like that. And then you can put the into the hose like that and we have a really nice seal. So easy to take apart, easy to put together, all that sort of thing. So now we'll put the hose in like this, so that we get the bubbler near the bottom of the tank. Give ourselves about 
well, in this case, the the hose going in is the one that we want to put the check valve on, so we'll just make it relatively short. In both cases. So, now we'll put, it doesn't matter which hole it, it goes in. Um, If it, the hole is slightly smaller than the tubing, it makes it hard to squeeze in, but then the seal is really good because the cap will squeeze against the tubing. There we go. And we just scoot it in there enough. So when the cap when the cap is on, we get the hose in there. So that the bubbler is pretty much horizontal is a good way to have it. That's good. Okay. Now We'll put another hose in the other side there, and it doesn't have to be very long because what we can do is extend the hoses whenever we need to. It helps sometimes if you just kind of taper to the end of the vinyl tubing a little bit with the knife, like just shave, 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 but I'm not doing that. I'm just trying to wedge it in there. Make it look like I know what I'm doing when I do this. Okay, and we'll just kind of point it the other direction. There we go. And there's the cap. We can put water in there, screw it on, finished bubbler. And we'll do the same with the other one. We want this hose to be pretty short because we want to take the gases from as high as possible in the uh, bottle so we don't get any moisture coming out there if necessary, any more than necessary anyway. And there we go. Our second bubbler finished. Okay, now the hose that's going down in, we put the check valve on, and you want to make sure that you get the airflow going in the right direction, which is, of course, into the bubbler. So I'll just check by blowing on it, and make sure that I get it the right direction. And there we go with the check valve in there. You want the gas to go in, into the bubbler. You don't want the water to come back out the bubbler. You want the water that's in here to stay in here and not go out to the electrolyzer or wherever else it is that the gas is coming from. So same thing with the other one. I get the right hose. And it kind of makes it easy to know when you're hooking the bubblers up to then which one is the in and which one's the out because the in has the check valve. Just like that. So we have two. Now we what we do is hook one up to the other. So we have two bubblers in line. The gas has come from the ER50 to this one, bubble through, bubble through, and then out for your um, whatever it is you're using the gas for. And in order to hook up additional hoses to these hoses, you just simply make yourself a little adapter here and you can slide that in about halfway and then you can add additional lengths of hose so you don't need to have a long hose on your uh, bubblers in order to do that and since these have a wide base put some water in there 
they'll be pretty solid and, and secure. Now, I've to showed you how to do all that, and we're talking uh, probably $5 in parts each one kind of thing, so you don't need to spend a lot of money on these. But, just for interest sake, you could buy one of these for about 5 to $7. And nice, there's a couple of nice features. First one is they have this check valve in here, so that it was actually kind of a pressure relief valve. So if, if the pressure in here gets too high, it'll just relieve the pressure. And with an ER50, that's certainly not a problem because the amount of gas that would be relieved is almost nothing. So what this particular thing is, is a humidifier for um, uh, ox oxygen. Like when people have bottled oxygen in their home and, they're, and they are have nose cannulas, like those things that put the oxygen right into your nose, the uh, the gas goes through, um, comes comes in here from the oxygen tank, bubbles up through the water, and humidifies the oxygen a little bit so that then when the oxygen goes out here, it doesn't dry out your nose so much. And that's, so that's what these are. They're oxygen humidifiers for nose cannulas for bottled oxygen. And you can buy these online um, relatively inexpensively, as many as you want. So you could just get a couple of those, and then you don't have to make your own bubblers. Now, one thing to note is that there is no check valve coming into here because, obviously, you know, with bottled oxygen, you never have it uh, um, depressurized. With an ER50, when it gets warm, it, the gases expand, and then when the gases cool off, they contract, makes a vacuum, sucks the um, sorry, sucks the uh, water back out, which is why you need the check valve. So you would still need to put a check valve on the uh, input for these particular humidifiers, but they're nice little bottles. Um, you can just buy and you don't even have to make uh, your own. The, either way you want to go, that's just fine. The, the uh, one thing though is that this particular fitting um, is, and I'll provide some links for it, is <laughs> two or three times as expensive as this whole bottle, interestingly enough. Or you could just um, take and buy the inexpensive fittings like this and just glue it in place so that uh, get it right down there and, and epoxy or glue it in place so that you don't have to um, spend like you could just like 50 cent fitting instead of spending like ten dollars for for official fitting so those are the kind of things that can be done and we'll go on to other videos